most of us pretended to be pirates when we were children. Who wouldn't love a life at sea, free to explore islands and collect treasure? Although the idea of pirates has become romanticized over the past few hundred years, pirates were still outlaws. They were raiders who took advantage of trade over waterways. Piracy has been part of human history since people began moving products over the water. Although piracy was highly prevalent during the golden age of piracy, did you know many pirates are still sailing the seas today? Many of us may believe piracy is a historical issue and has since disappeared with modern technology and safety measures. However, piracy continues in areas like Southeast Asia and South America. Authorities are still struggling with handling modern pirates effectively, but understanding how pirates operated during the golden age of piracy may give us a clue into how modern pirates continue to avoid justice. Despite the romanticism surrounding pirates, they were criminals, robbing ships and spending their ill-gotten gains on alcohol and reveling. Today, these criminals negatively impact trade in areas of the world that desperately need free trade to thrive. So it is time to look at how these pirates escape being caught. By examining historical and modern pirates, we may discover how we can solve piracy and end that sweet trade to make way for free trade. How did pirates historically escape being caught? Piracy became a popular, if illegal, form of employment in part due to the deplorable conditions sailors worked under. There was little hope of advancement, and they worked in near-constant life-threatening situations. These conditions included malnutrition, disease, local aggression, and pirates. One of the best ways to avoid being killed by a pirate attack was to join the pirates in question. While being a pirate did not include strikingly better amenities, it offered young men a chance to gain vast wealth and have slightly more freedom. Pirates even followed codes, which included the ability to vote the captain out if necessary. Of course, the authorities attempted to stop piracy by inflicting harsh punishments on the pirates they caught. This included beheading, drawing and quartering, and hanging. The bodies were then tarred or suspended in chains at prominent ports to warn all other sailors of the punishments awaiting them if they joined the pirates. However, sea trade was remarkably insecure during the golden age of piracy, partially due to slow communication and a lack of technology, so pirates could still capture vessels and loot money and luxury items. Even the way pirates attacked other ships helped them escape capture. They tended to avoid popular shipping routes because there was a high chance of encountering a naval vessel. They also usually only attacked ships traveling alone without hope of getting help, leaving them vulnerable. Once they had chosen their next victim, the pirates would approach by either flying a different flag or pretending to be in distress. Flying another country's flag would give a false sense of security, and pretending to need assistance tended to encourage their victims to come closer to help. Once the ship was close enough, the pirates revealed their true colors and ordered them to surrender, which most merchants did. Merchant ships generally did not have enough crew or firepower for a fight, so they relied upon bribery to survive. In this way, many pirates amassed vast wealth and even added experienced sailors to their crews. Some people, such as navigators, surgeons, and musicians, were recruited by force whenever pirates raided a ship. Pirating had an inherent issue, though. Showing up in a typical port with thousands of pounds of exotic goods in a poor vessel and a badly dressed, ill-behaved crew was suspicious at best. Most authorities investigated anyone who suddenly became wealthy, specifically if that wealth was acquired at sea. So pirates needed somewhere to safely trade their booty without attracting legal attention. While the pirates never created a pirate utopia or a country all to themselves, they did tend to meet in small ports or islands where officials ignored their illegal activities. Thus, pirate bases began forming in places like the Mediterranean, the Caribbean, and even Madagascar. They popped up slowly over several decades. One of the most famous pirate ports in the Mediterranean was Tortuga, which was primarily used by French, English, and Dutch pirates. As exploration extended west, the pirates followed, turning the Caribbean into a thriving economy. A couple of other famous bases were Port Royal in Jamaica and Nassau in the Bahamas. Both were famous for hosting drunkenness, prostitution, and general lawlessness, often indispensable parts of a pirate base. 
Madagascar, off the east coast of Africa, was more than another pirate base. Its strategic location between Africa and Asia made it an excellent place to acquire riches. Some of the most famous pirate raids took place around Madagascar, and some pirates settled on the island, declaring themselves kings of various regions and encouraging the locals to start wars. While their kingdoms did not last long, pirate influence still shaped the development of that region. Pirates chose these areas carefully, which is one of the ways they avoided being caught. By setting up bases, they could successfully trade their goods with little fear or legal interference, allowing them to continue their criminal lifestyle. The golden age of piracy did not end suddenly. Instead, piracy phased out of international trade as governments began to take the problem seriously. Pirate attacks continued to impact factory production. However, as the government started to treat it persistently, the frequency of pirate attacks decreased across the globe. It was a gradual process, particularly as nations rebuilt their navies after a decade of war, leaving some governors to handle the problem in their areas alone. Still, the most effective process against pirates was to appease them, offering pardons if they confessed to previous crimes. This forgiveness, combined with pirate hunters in known pirate bases, gradually reduced pirate activities, eventually ending the golden age of piracy. How do modern pirates still escape being caught? Of course, just because the golden age of piracy ended does not mean piracy stopped worldwide. Modern pirates continue to terrorize shipping vessels, and many people become pirates today for the same reasons people became pirates about 300 years ago. They need a job that offers some modicum of freedom. Many modern pirates also used to be legally employed sailors. Some are even fishermen who have seen how industries have depleted fish in the areas around Somalia or off the coast of the South China Sea. With dwindling resources and the state's refusal to help, people are desperate to feed their families, which makes piracy a valid option. Although it does not make international headlines frequently, piracy continues to be an issue. Nearly half of all reported pirate attacks occurred in the Gulf of Guinea in early 2021, making it a piracy hotspot. Unfortunately, experts believe many pirate attacks are not reported because ship owners do not want to deal with increased interest rates and drawn-out investigations. Experts believe piracy generates between $13 and $16 billion of loss yearly, and with little reporting, it is easier for pirates to avoid capture. They remain prevalent in areas like South America and Southeast Asia, in places unruled by law and order and where borders are uncertain. This political chaos unintentionally protects the pirates from being caught, especially when they take ships in vulnerable positions, like confined waters. Taking a vessel on the open ocean is riskier, so many pirates wait for the boat to be more exposed. Some pirate attacks even occur on anchored ships. Pirates also protect themselves from capture by utilizing heavy weaponry intended to intimidate, much like earlier pirates. However, they no longer carry swords, Instead, they utilize modern technology, using night vision goggles and GPS tracking to locate ships, and machine guns, rocket launchers, and grenades to take their chosen victim. This weaponry and technology make pirates a modern problem, as it helps them avoid capture because they are in closer communication with each other and their home bases than ever before. Modern pirates do more than steal cargo and loot shipping vessels. They also kidnap crews. Of course, kidnapping is not new to piracy, but it is a rising trend making the attacks even more expensive for ship owners. Ransoms average about $120,000 for a kidnapped crew, forcing some ships to hire security that can cost just as much. Sadly, being held for ransom is not always a guarantee of survival. Some hostages have died, and pirates do not always ransom the crew, preferring to dispose of them or leaving them marooned. Although the tools pirates use today differ from their predecessors, the methods for dealing with pirates have not substantially changed. While captured pirates no longer have to fear being drawn and quartered, they must constantly be aware of possible warships in the area. However, even the presence of warships from multiple nations is not enough to completely eliminate piracy. For example, piracy in Somalia remains a significant threat to the international supply chain. Even though several countries regularly patrol the waters, piracy is too lucrative and maintaining a constant naval presence is too expensive. 
Some experts recommend solving piracy by handling the social issues leading people into a life of crime. They view piracy as a social problem, so providing better welfare and support for sailors should ease it. However, in the short term, the authorities focus more on capturing pirates than solving the underlying societal issues. But even capturing pirates is ineffective. Although some pirates escape capture by working in lawless areas, there are currently few consequences for piracy. Nations have laws against it, but captured pirates are not always citizens of that particular nation. This means the rules don't always apply to them in that country. In addition, many countries do not want the expense of imprisoning pirates nor the trouble of finding witnesses and translators. So, most pirates are questioned and released allowing them to return to their lives of crime with no serious repercussions. Despite the few consequences, pirates still want to escape capture whenever possible, and some experts believe groups of pirates in Somalia and the South China Sea have connections with the government. If these reports are accurate, operating under governmental protection also helps pirates escape being caught. However, some experts also think at least one group of pirates has connections to London one of the significant shipbroking areas of the world. With inside information about shipping routes, cargo, and vessel layouts, modern pirates are more equipped than ever to plan their attacks with little risk of being caught. While piracy has changed throughout history, pirates today still have striking similarities to their predecessors in the golden age of piracy. Many of the people involved are also looking for economic opportunities in difficult life circumstances, with little hope for improvement. They also maintain their criminal habits through careful planning and intimidation. Pirates still use those practices to avoid being caught, and they continue to escape justice with the help of corrupt officials and unclear boundaries. In areas where disorder prevails, pirates are the most profitable. Until we can heal the social concerns leading people to piracy, it will remain an international issue. Pirates will continue to escape justice until we find a way to bring them back into society and solve the injustices that help perpetuate crimes, allowing piracy to finally fade into childhood stories about buried treasure and adventure. How would you like to get a deeper understanding of history, impress your friends, and predict the future more accurately based on past events? If this sounds like something you might be into, then check out the brand new Captivating History Book Club by clicking the first link in the description. To learn more about pirates, check out our book, The Golden Age of Piracy, a captivating guide to the role of pirates in maritime history during the early modern period, including stories of Anne Bonny, Sir Francis Drake, and William Kidd. It's available as an ebook, paperback, and audiobook. If you found the video captivating, please hit the like button and subscribe for more videos like this.